Just like anything new that we're not used to, myths and conspiracies arise. Take the COVID vaccine, for example. And therefore, that leads to two individuals. Number one is those that actually believe these conspiracies at face value and therefore stay cocooned into what they know. And therefore, that makes a very safe choice for them. Yeah, possibly. But are they missing out? Definitely. Take the guy that invested in Apple shares when he first came out at $5. See how he's doing right now. Then you have the second individual, who is the early adopter, who has time, willingness and money to try out the latest techs and trends, but then spend days trying to justify their choice to the first group. And that's where I come in, with the brand new series named Ice Busters. Short yet fact-based episodes aimed at busting the biggest myths around electric cars for ice drivers, but also for EV drivers. Make sure to subscribe, this is powered. So let's jump straight into the first myth that I'm going to cover and possibly the biggest barrier to EV ownership. Electric cars are expensive. At face value, yeah, that, that might be a little bit accurate. Just like people thought when the first personal computer came out or when the iPhone first came out, we naturally compare side by side and decide that it's too expensive. For example, why spend £10,000 on a hatchback EV when you could get the petrol car of your dreams that used to be worth £50,000 but now has depreciated to like £10,000, the same price. First of all, let's address something on the onset. The price of electric cars are dropping quite quickly, just like any other technology out there, unless you're Apple. And that's mainly due to the price of batteries. You can now buy an electric car, a hatchback for example, for as little as £20,000, which is actually on par with other hatchbacks which are petrol or diesel. And also with the announcement that even Elon made in September about the batteries in Teslas, he expects within the next five years with the savings made on batteries that he will be able to offer a Tesla within the same sort of price range within the next five years. So think about a Tesla coming out for as little as £25,000 brand new within the next five years. Second of all, we're actually at a tipping point at the moment. The supplies of EVs is growing exponentially with all OEMs releasing only EVs these days. But also demand is growing year on year. 2021 will be a big year for EVs, which means that the second-hand car market for EVs will only continue to grow. Even right now, we can see that a lot of leases are coming to an end and being sold on the second-hand car market. Yes, that does mean that the electric car that once used to depreciate very, very slowly will depreciate quicker. But on the other hand, it means that people who want to buy second hand now have a wide array of choices with very affordable prices. Already a quick search on Autotrader reveals that there are approximately around 6,000 electric cars listed on there at the moment for as low as £5,000. A few years ago, the filter for electric cars wasn't even on there. And so that addresses the market for second hand electric cars at the moment. But then the more popular route at the moment to getting electric cars is on lease due to the speed of progress within electric cars. The year on year change is quite significant and therefore most people tend to lease electric cars. I recently actually came across an advert showing a brand new Hyundai Ioniq, widely praised as one of the best family electric cars at the moment, for only £189 a month with a down payment of £1,700. Two were in stock. And by the time I made this video, they actually both got sold, showing that the demand is actually peaking quite quickly for electric cars. Sure, already £189 for a brand new car sounds quite affordable. But now let's compare it with, say, if you had a lease for a, say, a similar car, but powered by petrol or diesel. So let's start with the savings. First of all, owning an electric car means that you don't have to pay road tax. So already that's £250 off, as opposed to if you had a petrol or diesel car. Then there's maintenance, with less moving parts, i.e. for example a clutch or a gearbox, less maintenance is usually required with electric cars. And to model that, it kind of varies from individual to individual, and also due to the spontaneous nature of replacing things for your car, you don't usually account for it. It can be from as simple as a, ser as a yearly service to actually replacing a clutch that goes. But for the sake of our example, let's call it £500. So both of those removed means around £60 worth of savings every month of your £189. And now we're at £129 in comparison to if you were to own a petrol or diesel car, for example. But now is the real savings, the fuel. The lease deal that I'm using as an example had 500 miles included per month. I know it's a little bit low, but let's use that as an example for simplicity. Charging your electric car at home and sometimes on the go, let's model that at around 2p per mile. 
very, very low, but actually that's what the figures are showing. So that's around 10 pounds a month that you'd spend on charging your car for around 500 miles a month versus around 15p per mile if you were to drive a petrol or diesel car for the same mileage per month, which would have cost you 75 pounds a month. So therefore that's a savings of 65 pounds a month from charging your car at home as opposed to refueling. And therefore taking that off your car lease, we're already at 64 pounds a month for owning an EV. And 64 pounds a month divided by the number of days in a, in a month, that's two pounds a month for owning an electric car plus the savings that have been achieved from owning an electric car. That's the same price as a Santander bike in London. And of course, without even including the benefits of not harming the environment or causing air pollution and actually never having to go to a petrol station again. So hopefully an electric car is starting to sound more affordable now, especially when you look at the total cost of ownership. But actually I haven't included other savings, things like congestion charge, for example, which you don't have to pay when you have an electric car. And that's £15 a day. And actually due to the new rules, you actually have to pay congestion charge now seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m every single day of the year except Christmas. Thanks, Sadiq. So if you're someone that would like to travel to central London, for example, even for weekends or for work, then that's another savings and another big saving that you should definitely take into account. And yeah, right, you might be watching this thinking this is an Ionic, you know, it looks like a Prius, that's more of a family car. That doesn't replace my BMW M3 or my 3 Series or my 5 Series. You can tell I really like BMWs. But as I mentioned, all manufacturers are coming out with an electric version of all their cars. You can actually get a plug-in hybrid for most of those models at the moment. And as the second-hand car market continues to grow and as more models are coming out and as more vehicles are out on the streets, the prices will come down. And you may be watching this thinking there's one big saving which I've forgotten, which is actually if you get the electric car on your business expense. And that's true, that's a very big savings which could actually lead to even 20 to 30% savings on getting an electric car. Just have a look at all those YouTubers that have expensed a Tesla Model 3. And there's a very specific reason for that. Business in kind tax for electric cars are at the moment are at 0%, which could actually make an electric car very, very affordable for you. And I'm actually going to make a video specifically on how you can expense your car and make use of this huge discount. As there's so much to say and I don't want to make this video too long. And therefore see you on the next one as we debunk more myths around owning an electric car from whether the grid in the UK can actually support so many cars going electric to myths around the actual battery itself to some people even saying can electric cars be driven in the rain? All of those and more will be covered, therefore subscribe to be the first to know about them. And I'll see you on the next one. See ya.